Welcome everyone to the Town of Brookfield Select Board meeting Thursday, July 25th, 2024. Please stand to the first flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. have any announcements. This meeting is being recorded. Um, signed warrants. Who wants to read them? Uh, I can read them. Um, fiscal year 2502-1-68-99-530. Uh, fiscal year 2502 accounts payable, 358-536-53. And fiscal year 2020 502 with holding $69,444.41. All right. Agenda item number one, site visit report and course of action review for South Palm Beach nourishment and access. I don't even know where to begin. Sure. Uh, we made a site visit at South Pond. There's some areas that could really use some attention sooner than later. Uh, I thought even if we could break the beach with a York Rake to stack, that would make it a little more desirable. Uh, and then come up with exactly what we're going to do, whether we repave or pave the area, the walkway to get down there. Uh, I talked to Bob Woodard, who his dad, the beach is named after. And it's not really named after him because of the handicap accessibility. No. Right? So no. you remember right. that? And yeah, it yeah. started because... He was a hunter and fisher. Well, it was both, yeah. but it started because the residents of South Pond wanted to close the access off to the public. And uh, Dick Woodard was a prior selectman. He wanted it open, and he fought to keep it open. And that's the, in lieu of the, the name of South Bond. But anyway, it's ironic, he was in a wheelchair. He was a paraplegic from, for a long time. So he, I talked to Bob that he thought anything we do down there would be a great thing, and he's willing to even come and help. He was a long time resident. He's approximately my age. And uh, so I think to mitigate the erosion, I think if we Pave the area. I think that would and stay the longest for a very minimal cost, and then put some riprap in the area where we're getting some erosion and kind of funnel the people from creating new pathways because the riprap would be hard to walk in, and uh, and then maybe put some sand on the beach. And I think all of the above would be done for under ten thousand dollars. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think we can get enough volunteers. Yeah, yeah. and I think the the key thing is is that. Uh, that we discussed and that I'd like to put to a vote is that I'd like to authorize Rich to uh, work with the Conservation Commission to develop two specific oh, right. requests, one to be the renourishment of the beach and one for the work on the pathway to, to do the design and, and get that cleared from the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. So that was your motion? That was so your second. second. So second. second. Yep. Yep. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 So, and I, I do want to just, I know we already voted it, but just to get on the record, we did discuss a bunch of different options for surfacing for the path. The first one was the, the dense gravel, the second one was asphalt, and the third one was the uh, water permeable pavers. But in reviewing it and cost versus like minor improvements in permeability, uh, we came to the conclusion that the more available material and the one most likely to get us the results that we wanted is indeed the asphalt. Um, and also that we, we discussed including that design the railing um, to make it safer once the, yeah. the path is in place. Um, trying to think of besides the rip wrap and that, were there any other features that I we can't discussed? think of anything the rail and I have left out, but that's a good point. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we have on the record what the yeah. what needs to go in the plan. Sure. So. And it's just on the one side, on the higher right, side. Right, on the high side. Okay. Yep, just on the high side. Yep. So, 
Okay. And then, uh, and then one other piece that we probably want to include in the design is another, another signage area similar to the state signage area right. up at the top. So we can take all the signs down off the trees and put it at the at the head of that. Yeah, where are they going to hang there? Sure. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, I just want to make sure we get it all in the design the first time. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Is that it? Yep. Uh, number two, clarifying discussion regarding the role of select member Beth Coughlin as previously designated liaison for the select board for host community agreement negotiations with Sun Fusions Inc. regarding a marijuana facility project. Okay, so uh, in the last meeting, somewhat out of order in the sense of not proximate to the original in the last cell discussion, Mr. Chafee questioned why myself and Ron had reached out directly to Mr. Bob. And I didn't go back and get the date of the vote back in like January or February. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, sometime January or February, I was actually designated as the select board's representative for communications and negotiations to then bring information back to the select board as we do this sort of work, especially given some of the limitations on direct communication between the board members. Uh, so I was continuing to operate under that paradigm relative to that discussion. So if you want to know what was going through my head, because you seem somewhat taken aback on what was going through my head that I would think to act independently, I had been acting independently and then bringing the information back to the board for just over five months relative to that topic. So I can't decide anything, I can't commit to anything individually. That is a well-known fact is that I can communicate, I can get information, I can bring it back to the board, but nothing discussed or um, recommended in any way has any type of binding force until it's voted by the board. And that's how it's worked all along. So um, if we want to rescind that vote or if we want to do something different going forward, we can have that discussion. That's not what's on the agenda today. I just wanted to clarify where the question came up you know, what was going on there? Why Why would you act independently? That was why I was acting independently. And functionally, it was supposed to be the beginning of a process to try to get all the parties sitting together. So I just want to make sure that's on the record. <clears throat> so thank you for clarifying that. But I guess I had spoke to Ron. The whole open meeting law situation makes it extremely difficult. You and I can't communicate, and we don't, right? So makes it hard, but I expressed to Ron and uh, Karen that anything going forward I thought was really important to do in an open public forum going forward to do with it. Um, well, I think, but I made it I really clear. Oh, okay, hold on. So I made it really clear, or I thought I made it clear that, that I wasn't questioning your integrity. I know it came out strong, but I had talked to Ron and Karen about it and felt strong that, and I and I wasn't part of the previous selectment to know that you were a liaison for that. So uh, maybe I'll apologize if I was too strong, but I feel that anything to do with it should be in an open public forum, and that, that's my only concern. I made it clear to you that I didn't question your integrity, but I was a little upset that I made it clear to Ron and Karen and not even knowing it didn't get to you. Right, and they so, can't and they can't get it, to me. It, so you should have known better. Honestly, well, you've no, been a selectman I, well, before and you know the open meeting law. They can't actually convey that to me, technically. They can't maybe say my exact verbiage, but they can certainly let you know some concerns of the board. Yeah, yeah that's I, actually I that's, that's right. actually <laughs> really that's actually I mean, really that's actually uh, starting to step well, into what are serial you? conversations. Fall under open it's, it's yeah, it's, it's certainly a, a gray zone, yeah. and that's the difficulty of a, of a three-member board. Um, but yeah, it's I guess part of the difficulty is I, I actually also mentioned to Brad that this is something that that you were looking to do, and Mr. Fromm had agreed to, yeah. and Brad didn't have a problem either. But I think goes to speak to the fact that you all and the previous board had agreed to you discussing the HCA, and this is really an extension of the, the HCA, with Mr. Fromm. Right, the, the other piece of it is, you do have to keep in mind that 
HCAs are contract negotiations. Okay. And it's not required to be an executive session, but um, a lot of negotiations short of the actual signing. One of the reasons to, to do that is so that there's less disruption and the ability to, to communicate um, very openly with the negotiating party. So I'm not saying that that's the way it should be going forward, but if you're looking for only full board communication, um, we, we need to have a discussion about, about whether or not um, doing doing it going forward in every communication associated with it being an open meeting might put us into a, a, a scenario where it's, where it's viewed as overly burdensome given schedules, given timelines, given a, a number of other things. So, so one way I thought that we could alleviate some of that was I asked Ron about recording the meeting. And we talked about that, but there was really no logistics to do that. But I thought that would also offer some transparency that that should be at least, if, if nothing else, mm -hmm. that meeting could be recorded. So I, I would like to say then, in the future, can we record whatever you're doing with the HCA just so that it's out in public, that, that the public would have an opportunity to see it rather than it just, it should, to me, it just lends itself to scrutiny meeting behind closed doors. I think you're going to have to be careful because one of the things that is a legal pitfall with cannabis is that if you conduct your method of approving their business in a way that's different from how you treat other businesses, it can leave you exposed to a lot of the regulation around inappropriate barriers. So I think we have well, to run that by KP. Uh, yeah, I would run it by KP. I'm just thinking like as a, you know, if I was coming to the town, not doing marijuana, just doing something and it was recorded and I was in the middle of a negotiation, I probably wouldn't feel comfortable. Yeah. I would just back out of the town. It, it, yeah. It's also for <laughs> Massachusetts, there's a two party state. Well, that's what I'm so saying. So Mr. Frum would have, have to agree. Yeah, yeah. He would have Absolutely. to agree, he'd have to, he'd have to agree willingly and, um, you might get that, you might not. But the flip side is, is again, my big concern, and I think we would have to run it by KP, is that if you are perceived as putting up barriers that are different outside of the constraints of the cannabis law, to somebody doing business in town in that particular industry, you leave yourself exposed to legal action. But but not only just cannabis. If, if we're, if, what, what would be the harm in recording something if the other party is so we would have known. to write a policy that in all negotiations that's, and that's my point and everything going forward and then if it's something you know i'll give you an example right we're about to police do an executive yep. session with the police right. contract are we saying all of those would be open meeting and all of them would be recorded well it could be and then eventually all executive sessions become known to the public in, in time in right time, so so yes. that would still there wouldn't be a problem with recording this executive session we're going to have tonight so i don't see what the issue would be at some point it's going I think to be we released. Have to check. Yeah, check with i don't know that people record executive sessions even mm -hmm. for later release I, i've never been in a recorded executive session i've honestly probably been in well over 100 yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've got, what, 20 years on a select board? Yeah, 21. Yeah. So, I mean, again, it's it, I, you'd be kind of groundbreaking with that, and I think we need to make sure that okay. yeah. what we would be doing wouldn't in some way set us set us up for you know, a lot of yeah, challenges. Yeah, no, I, I, the reason I want it is transparency, so there's no liability, right? So I don't want to create right, a situation the, the that side, puts us in the liability. Exactly, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, unfortunately, there's ways it can contribute both ways. Yeah. So. Are we good on that? Yep, I think we're good. Thank you. I just wanted to get, yeah. I, I just wanted to clear the... Uh, discussion that. regarding future establishment of some purpose-built committees. Yes. Okay, so two things. One is that um, I did speak offline with uh, Mr. Carmen regarding that for communications regarding the 
the marijuana potential for marijuana cultivation on Molasses Hill Road and the citizen concerns, there's really two options. So if this they, is item number A. That's yeah, item A, yeah. right? So, so for item A, I said there's really fundamentally two options. We could as can, a, can, can I pause you for one second? When it comes to that, I want to remove myself. Like I don't want to get caught in this I, because I'm not going to vote on anything to do with from because I'm in a butter. I own land on Molasses Hill, so so I think it'd be better if I just remove myself for this portion of it because you're talking about specifically the Molasses Hill portion yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. So you're just so you're recusing yeah, yourself. Yeah, I'm, gonna okay, and that's I'm, right. I'm even going to sit on the other side of the room. Okay, that's fine. So <laughs> thank you. Um, so th we really have two. If 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 the citizens would like to see a formal committee and to have it be a more structured way of communicating, um, then we really have two options. We can write up a charter and ask for like a five-person board that's like a Molasses Hill steering committee or something along those lines. Um, but then the onus would be on the members of that committee to follow the same open meeting laws, same records keeping, same everything that any town board or committee does. And if it's a five-person board, if three of them are in a room for some other purpose, they run into, you know, risk of violating open meeting law, okay? Or if they choose to form a citizen action committee similar to what we did with the senior center, they could form their own committee and then choose whatever leaders or communication style that they want and then, you know, get themselves on the schedule at, as needed or ad hoc to discuss stuff with the board. So. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't like the idea of it being formal, like doing minutes and okay. us having any real involvement with it. Yep. I'd rather them as a group just let us know, like, here's okay. the person that is dealing with all the uh, communication. That's fine. I mean, I, I just, I wanted to, to make everybody aware of the options yeah. because, yeah. you know, if, if they, if it's one of those things that fundamentally as a chartered committee, there's a, a more formal relationship, but there's also kind of more of an expectation yeah. of us fundamentally using them as advisors. Relative well, I, the to other them. concern I would have is if that group felt we were doing something that wasn't in their best interest and it led to a lawsuit. Now here's a committee that's part of the town that's now suing the town. That's true, but it wouldn't be the first time yeah. one committee has sued another one in All this right. town, so, or one board has sued another one in this town. So we have practice. For that. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I did want to at least just put it out there that either one is an option. Yeah. Um, there's benefits and risks to either one. We don't need to decide anything tonight. Um, and then roads and bridges advisory committee. I don't know if you want to come back up. So I've had this recommendation probably half a dozen times in the last three years. Um, and there's a, there's a feeling that a lot of times we set our highway superintendent up for failure because, um, you know, we take folks that are predominantly hands-on, not necessarily work with the public type folks, and, um, you know, put the onus of, of both the dealing with the public making all of the policy decisions, advising us on, on which direction they're going with certain things. And um, there are some folks that would like to have the opportunity to, to support and, and communicate either historically how the town's done stuff, um, you know, make recommendations, um, potentially help with the prioritization and, and, and some of the project planning associated with um, the highway superintendent role. Um, so, is this along the lines of? It's almost like water. Like a, like a highway commissioner. Yeah, it's yeah. basically like a, like a highway commissioner board versus like the water commissioners. Yeah. Um, I did, I, I, I'm why not, do you have it listed as roads and bridges? Because that I, would really just. I mean, why not just call it a okay. highway department advisory? Committee? I just. Oh. I just picked a, I just picked All a right. name and threw it out there. All I'm right. not wedded to it. I, I just, I thought was those are the yeah. two major things. Yeah. Uh, and, and most of the things fall under some subset of it other than mowing. And I, I think I called it road and bridges because I think we, we do, we, um, 
we do too much mowing yeah. and, and mechanicing only and not enough roads and bridges work. So I right. think that's why in my head I was I wanted the, the focus to be on, on that. So uh, it was a little subliminal message. Okay. For me. So, um, so I don't know what the thoughts are on that. Um, uh, I don't know if we would want to try to do like maybe even if it was just a three person committee, you know, would, and, yeah. and put out a or try to get a five person. I would, yeah, if we could try to get a five. Yeah, it and, and maybe it's another e one. It of makes those. things easier because if they need to work on something, they can't. And, they, may yeah. and maybe it's one where I, we we make poor Rana ex officio member, yeah. so we only have to find four, you know. <laughs> Fine by me. But uh, um, but I but you know it seems like not a terrible idea. I mean, to try. So question. So Rich now is the liaison for the highway. Yeah. So. Is, is there anything different between what he's doing, or what, or could he go just on that committee as well? He now could, you got two of the five. Or, he, he could go on that committee, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, but then at least does. we have a, a few other voices yeah. and some other perspectives because there's for for every problem we have on those roads, there's there's probably three or more solutions. Yeah. And so it, it might be good to get some some uh, yeah. just other perspectives. Um, one of the people that's interested in serving is actually Bruce Clark, and I figure having a former water guy on a on something on a commission like that would mm -hmm. be really valuable to us, right? And he also did a lot of supportive work for the highway department while he was yeah. still working for us directly. Um, he, I know he would it, literally do 12 to 15 hours a week down there, so yeah, that, like, so he knows the inner workings inside and out. Exactly. So he would be a great person. So I figured that would that would get us to three. I know of a couple other folks. I'm sure Sir Rich might know of a couple of other folks that might be interested in serving. I figured maybe bring it back in the next, if not the next meeting, the meeting after that, bring up Slada candidates and yeah. see what we can do to, to form up a committee. Sure. Yeah. So. And uh, and that's one I think we would get interested in because everybody's got their opinion. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I did on that. So thank you for forbearance. Right. Sounds good. Do you have anything else on that? Or? I don't. All right, next. Sign notice of award for engineering procurement of Kimball Street project for fiscal year 2022-2023 20, community development block grant. Oh, I know. So it's called FY2223 because that's when it was originally done. Board. This is now the procurement for it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'll make a motion that we um, sign the notice of award for the Kimball Street project for the fiscal year 2223 community development block grant. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, items not reasonably anticipated by the chair, 48 hours more in advance. I don't have anything, so... Motion to adjourn into executive session for the purpose of um, discussing strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares relative to New England Police Benevolent Association, and we will not return to open meeting and adjourn direct from executive session. Second. We're all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.